Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online Bible study. So we want you to just go ahead and just relax, go ahead and get your coffee, your drinks. I know some of you maybe got your food going, you're out with the kids, getting things done at practices, school, wherever you are right now. We just want you to go ahead and receive this word tonight. Um, I want to go ahead and jump into this. I'm not going to keep you long tonight, but I do want to share something that I believe is going to be impactful. We're going to kind of get in our business tonight with some things when we are talking about building according to pattern. Uh, we're in this, what we call the Nehemiah project, and where we're talking about building and the rebuilding of the wall, even in Nehemiah. And so one of the things that began to happen was this, that Nehemiah began to make connections with individuals to repair the wall, and he did it in record time. And so it only took him 52 days. But then what happened is this, God, he, God had a, well, he had a burden on his heart to rebuild his wall, but then he asked God for wisdom and for the strategy to get the job done. And so he even connected with individuals and they got it done in a record amount of time. And so one of the things I want to deal with today is uh, we talked about the power of connections and I may continue that on Sunday, but tonight I still want to pick back up when we talk about the different areas of your life where we have to rebuild or we have to build in our lives. So before I get going with that, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of your word. We bless and we thank you for it. We do covet your gifts. Uh, to be an operation and demonstration as needed. Thank you for the anointing to teach, to expound and to share. <clears throat> Thank you that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened tonight, that we may see, hear, and know what it is and comprehend and understand what you want us to receive. I thank you for great wisdom that I have the tongue of the learned to speak a word in season tonight. We give you praise, glory, and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And um, when we talk about building according to pattern, um, I've been sharing that. I believe the Holy Spirit shared with me some time ago that he said, Mike, if you're good in six areas of your life, then your whole life will be good. And those areas where he was referring to your spiritual life and then your soul, which comprise of the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions and the imagination. But then also your physical body, your finances, your relationships and your purpose. And so we talked about the spiritual life and we talked about the importance of being spiritually healthy. We talked about the born again process when your spirit becomes alive under God and that the Holy Spirit comes and abides on the inside of you. And this is the beginning of this life in Christ. And so then we talked about the soul. Um, and, and, and I really didn't do it the justice that it really deserves. That's a whole series in and of itself of the process of renewing the mind, but renewing the mind is going to impact every one of these areas that we're talking about. But tonight I want to talk about an area that sometimes we don't talk about enough in church and we need to talk about it more. Uh, we're going to talk about the body. We're going to talk about us taking care of our bodies um, and making sure that we're healthy, making sure that we're strong to get the job done in our lives. We want to be here long. We want to live long and we want to live strong. And also how we treat our bodies will determine our quality of life. And so now we really have to make it a, a, a point and to be very intentional about taking care of ourselves, taking care of our bodies. And so I want to start here with the Apostle Paul. And he reads it here in, in chapter 9, verses 25 through 27. Now, I'm reading this out of the New Living Translation. And it says, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with, the purpose, with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Now, our bodies are the house of our spirit and our soul. 
Now, here Paul is talking about um, even not allowing his body to do what it wants to do and even dealing with sin and the sin nature. But to understand also, I want to talk about that a little bit because even Scripture talks about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we're going to go there in a minute. But we, we got to know how to take care of ourselves because just as much, just as important as it is for us to now take care of ourselves spiritually, to take care of ourselves mentally, it is adequate, equally as important for us to take care of ourselves physically. I myself, this is a journey for me. And so this is a thing where, you know, you know, when I was younger, I used to be very disciplined in my exercise and I was very active. And plus when you're just younger, your metabolism is different. But then over the years, I began to see, um, and, and, and the funny thing was it started when my wife got pregnant uh, with the twins, with our twins, and then I began to just kind of not do as much as I used to, but then sitting down eating cookies and ice cream and, and stuff, and, you know, you know, I, I gained that pregnancy weight with her and, you know, stuff like that, and then it was like a journey because there was a time where I had to go and I would um, be more mindful so far as working out on a daily basis doing these things. And so one of the things, now that's not her fault, I'm not blaming her in any way, shape, fashion, or form, but that was just, I began to see a turn for myself personally. And so one of the things, and it's been a fluctuating journey, and so one of the things I'm personally doing is I'm working on getting myself on a consistent regimen of not just working out, but eating better. And I'm gonna talk about this supplementing things. And one of the issues and one of the things I talked about um, on Sunday, and one of the things I really wanted to get across was learning how to make changes in your life, even on small levels. So, you know, on levels that you can be consistent with so that you're not overwhelmed with sudden change. And so sometimes even with our bodies are concerned, Paul said it like this. He says, I discipline myself. I treat my body roughly. I discipline it and I train it like an athlete. And so that's one of my personal goals is to even train my body like an athlete. But I know because so much time is going on and then weight gain and things of that nature, whether it's aches or pains and people saying that, you know, once you get past a certain age, your body starts adjusting, whether it's lower hormone levels, all of those things, that these are things that we have to deal with. But I do believe that God says we can be better than where we currently are. And so now it's us taking that time and saying, okay, I want to make sure that I take my health just as serious, just as serious as you take your deliverance and freedom from all type of sin. Gluttony is sin, just like smoking weed or you um, uh, having premarital sex or you cheating on somebody or you lying and you robbing. Listen, gluttony or sinning even against your own body, which is God's. So that, that's important because I'm going to show you scripture in just a second that says our bodies are God's temple. This is his house. We've been bought with a price. So we're to glorify God in our bodies. Now, this isn't necessarily always the easiest message to preach because now being a preacher of the gospel, I can't be a hypocrite of it. I can't, I have to now abide by the things that God's word tells us to do. And many times, even where preachers are concerned, you're seeing it more now. More preachers are even taking care of themselves. It's more of a trend. This is a healthier uh, culture that we're in, that it pumps things. You know, it pushes exercise and fitness and all of those things. But along with that come other things that have been pushed, processed foods and putting things in our bodies. That's, you see more cancers coming up. You see more people dealing with diabetes. And a lot of this stuff comes from these foods that we're now we're putting in our bodies and we're not taking care of ourselves the way that we need to. And so, listen, I understand that. And so this is a journey. And so it starts with the renewing of the mind. Any journey that we go on starts with us changing how we think about it. So even our relationship with food is going to be very important of how we think about food. I heard this from someone years ago, and I never forgot the phrase that I want to learn and I want to eat to live versus living to eat. That you eat to live versus living to eat. And so I understand we want to enjoy our food. We want to enjoy those things, but we also want to make sure that we're properly taking care of ourselves. And so our bodies are the house of our spirit and soul. And when your energy levels are low, then your body is under heavy attack. 
and it can and it will impact the quality of your life. It's something where you can't be strong enough to run with your children and even for grandparents to play with your grandchildren and you're too tired to get up and to move. That's, it's almost like you're, because you are a spirit. We are spirit beings. We live, we have a soul. We live in a physical body. And when your body is incapacitated and you're not able to do things, it's almost like you're trapped on the inside. You want to do things. You want to live a better life. But then now you realize, wait a minute, this stuff is attacking my body. Now, I'm not talking about when things, uh, uh, a health, um, an attack from the enemy comes. That's attacking your health. But I'm talking about things that we definitely have a control over. And we do even have authority in that area to release our faith for divine healing but I'm talking about just as much as divine healing. And that's more so what we hear preach, but more so now we're hearing divine health, being preventive in things, um, taking proper supplements, getting the nutrients and the vitamins in your body. That means you got to renew your mind. You got to research. You got to find out natural things. Even when my wife went through her uh, health crisis and, and how things hit her body and how she began to research natural supplements because she got tired of just pumping a bunch of medicines in her body and all of these different things. And then this one's supposed to have this side effect and this one got this thing. And I'm not against doctors. I love doctors. They, I believe they're of God. They help us, but they're still practicing things too. And we're learning this body, this fine tuned machine that God created. And so we know that God put everything in the earth that we need for our bodies. Okay. I'm not a certified nutritionist and all those things, but I've done some research and I've done some things. And I know that to get to the closest to the original creation that God created to fuel our bodies and to not add all of the other additives and, and things and preservatives that will now even uh, detract from the nutrients that we can receive in our bodies. We got to be, we just got to be more mindful. And so I'm not here to try to just um, take away your fun because, you know, sometimes people say stuff like and they think like, man, listen, you already said I can't drink no more. You already said I can't do this. I can't have sex the way I used to outside of marriage. I can't do this. I can't do that. At least give me my food. At least let me. But see, then so people are dying. People are dying prematurely. There are people who can't fulfill their calling by God because their body is riddled with disease. I know what it's like to have God's anointing come upon my body while I'm preaching. And after it lifts, it just feels like, man, I don't want to do anything. Don't want to talk to anybody. It's like, I got to recuperate and recover versus moments of times where God has instructed me to exercise even beforehand. And I feel the difference in my energy levels. I'm not as tired. I'm not as run down and worn out and I can do more. And see, this is just as much about your purpose as it is anything else. God needs you healthy. He needs you fit to fight this fight of faith. He needs you fit for purpose. He needs us fit for purpose. Right now, I'm, I'm just, I'm talking to me just like I'm talking to you. And so I want to make sure that we take this journey together, that we're building our lives, that not only are we talking about a spiritual journey, but we're not only talking about this emotional, mental journey that we're going on, but also this physical journey. For us developing ourselves, getting strong, getting fit, being, being healthy. We want to live long and we want to live strong. I don't know about you. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know about you, but I want to be fit for the master's use. I want to be fit for my family. I want to be fit for my wife to enjoy me and for me to enjoy her. I want us to have, you know, listen, I'm telling you, I want us to have a life where we just enjoy, that we're able to travel, that we're able to do things versus saying, you know what? I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. That's not good life. Jesus came for us to have life and to live it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And so this is part of it. And so we want to make sure that we do those things. Now, our bodies, like I told you, our bodies are the temple of God. And in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. I don't have much time, but watch this. In the New Living Translation, it says it like this. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you? 
God will destroy anyone who destroys his temple for God's temple is holy and you are that temple. Second Corinthians six sixteen it says, and what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Now, also, now I know this seems harsh when you listen to these scriptures, but even in first Corinthians, he was even talking about how people were now having sex and doing illicit and immoral things full of lust, full of sexual immorality and things. A lot was going on in the Corinthian church. And so Paul came in and was cleaning house. He was letting these people know y'all can't keep living like this. Can't keep doing this stuff. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of God and you can't connect it with a harlot. And I'm trying, I'm, I'm being real nice. I can get, I can say another word, but it's like, don't you know that you can do that? You know, that you got to be mindful how you use your body because your body is God's temple. And so now you got to realize that not only for just doing illicit or immoral things so far as, all of the other things that we talked about, the works of the flesh, but just as much is gluttony, is being addicted to food is just as bad. And a lot of times it's been worse than people being addicted to drugs, being addicted to sugar. It, listen, sugar is just as bad as crack. In some cases, it seems worse because it doesn't seem like it's, it's not illegal but when you start dealing with morality and realizing that, wait a minute, me pouring this stuff in me, these white sugars and all of this stuff that, hey, it's hurting my body. It's causing inflammation in my joints. It's causing diseases. It's causing uh, blood sugar levels to be off and off balance. All of these things. I remember this time um, years ago, um, my wife, uh, my wife and I, we had, um, after our girls, our girls might have been about four years old at this time. And um, the doctor told us that um, that she couldn't have any more children. It was because I think it was like a thyroid level. Something was going on exactly. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, but he was like, she couldn't have any more children. We knew that. We didn't even believe that report because we knew we were believing for a son as well. And so during this time, the church that we were a part of, we went on a fast, a 21-day fast. And on this fast, we couldn't eat sugars, um, and things of that nature. So it was a very strict diet. It was kind of, it was like a Daniel fast. I believe it was. And so during this time, Raquel gets pregnant. And so we conceive our son during this time. Not only that, her body started, is, things started happening in her body when now her body was conducive to now even receive the seed, produce the seed, and now we got a son. Even during that, I began to realize I was on my feet working the job that I worked at that time. I was on my feet constantly for hours. And I was always, my knees were sore. And I'm a young man at this. I'm still maybe late 20s, early 30s, somewhere right now, like 31, maybe 30, 31. I forgot exactly which. But um, yeah, I think it was 30 around this time. And so I remember my, I, my knees used to be you know, sore and stiff and all of this stuff. But during this time of the fast, I began to notice my knees were nearly as sore. I didn't feel any pain, any inflammation. Um, my joints weren't hurting. I was resting better. Things like your skin lightens up. You begin to feel lighter. You feel, you feel, you feel cleaner. You feel like toxins are coming out of your body, all of this stuff. And so there are times where we need to begin to learn even how to detox our bodies and to flush out toxins and things of that nature and to pour in, you know, water. Our, our body is primarily comprised of even water and we got to know how to even flush out and, and to help clean our systems out and, and to, to hydrate our bodies and all of these things. And so I'm telling you, this is so important, y'all. This is so important. Yeah, now, this is the thing. This is the thing I wrote down, and I think it's really important. We need to begin to see the seriousness of this because a lot of times we'll even joke about stuff like this. You know, I got this joke from my uncle, and I used to, you know, I used to tell it. I'll say stuff like, yeah, I got a six-pack um, in my body, is it? but it's under all this ice. And we just start laughing. It's like, yeah, yeah, ha, ha. But sometimes the thing I've, I've looked at, the things that we joke about, we tend not to change. Because 
we 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 laugh at things, but we don't think about well, since Satan can't get us with some big illicit immoral thing, he'll use our lack of restraint to eat stuff that he knows that, okay, just let them keep eating all of this stuff and all of these impurities and let all of this stuff be put in their, in their bodies. Keep pumping all of this stuff in them. And he's like, okay, if I can't kill them one way, I'll try to kill them another way because he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I'm coming that you might have life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And so we got to be mindful of these things. So even how we exercise and strengthen our bodies and begin even learning how to do the small things. I'm talking about, I'm not telling you to go and you got to be Miss America or Mr. Mr. Universe and, you know, like you in, in bodybuilding mode. But hey, there are some things that you can begin to start to do on a regular basis to even build your muscle mass, to strengthen your bones. You know, as you get older, certain your body doesn't naturally produce things the way they used to. So now you got to make sure that you're putting certain nutrients intentionally on purpose. They have supplements, the things that you can do consulting your physician, but also consulting people, nutritionists, people who study the natural things that you can put in your body that produces life and health. And so you don't have to be riddled with disease. You don't have to be taking medications for the rest of your life because of high blood pressure and high glucose levels and all of these things. There are things that you can do naturally to begin to cause the body to heal. The body is really designed to heal itself. God designed it this way. And so we don't want to come against the natural process of things. So we have to renew our minds. See, we didn't talk about this stuff coming up. We just know, hey, we hungry. You know, mom and daddy put this out in front of us, some fried this and fried that. And, and so many times, especially amongst African-Americans, a lot of times they'll tell us that we have, we're more prone to diseases. But a lot of times they don't tell you the reason why we're more prone to diseases. Some of this stuff is not hereditary. Some of this stuff is culture is like us being brought up yeah even from slave times where we got all of the leftovers and and so big mama and them had to learn how to make stuff out of scraps and all of this stuff and so people start eating pig intestines and and all of this stuff and call them chitlins and and we love it. we call it a delicacy but then it produces high blood pressure in you you got all this sodium coming in pork and all of these things and so you got we got to be mindful of how we're eating smothered everything you know and things we have to be mindful of how we're eating now i'm just saying i'd rather us not be ignorant and there's one thing just to be completely ignorant um i want you to know though we need to learn more about these things and to make adjustments so it could be something as simple as okay areas we want to deal with is our eating habits and exercise and how we rest so it can be small changes that we begin to make things like, okay, going to sleep a little bit earlier versus staying up late watching TV all the time and getting an extra hour or two of sleep, trying to get maybe seven hours of sleep, six to seven, eight hours is better, but trying to increase our rest, shutting off the phone. That way, even mentally we're resting and we're feeling better and we're not stressed because stress is what's called the quote unquote silent killer that it'll cause abnormalities in your body just because even you're worrying about stuff. See, all of this stuff is tied together. God wants us to live a good life. See, when you're worried about money and worried about how you're going to eat and not having enough money to even buy the right foods to begin to now feed yourself properly so you just get what's affordable and sometimes the stuff that's affordable is sometimes the worst stuff for your body. So now that means also, and we'll get into that in the next segment, um, when we talk about even financially, God wants us to increase and we're to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And so he wants us to prosper so that even we can live a healthier life. See, all of this stuff is tied together so that now you can afford to get this stuff and then start doing stuff. Listen, I'm just throwing these things out here, even agriculturally, growing our own gardens, making our own vegetables and things of that nature. And so I'm telling you, these are things that sometimes, though, is is not the most convenient. But when you're talking about being intentional, meal prepping, 
um, instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to run um, to the local drive through I'm not going to call out any, any restaurants or fast food places, but say, okay, let me meal prep. Let me bake this and grill this. And so let me eliminate maybe frying things and, and stuff like that. My family always talk about, okay, let's go ahead and um, – uh, put the deep fry away and not use it. And we will do maybe air fry or do grilled or do baked, just things like that. And say, okay, let's add in more green leafy vegetables. And, and even on your plate with vegetables, even getting more color in our plates, you know, of how we're eating different things. And so, you know, whether it's adding cauliflower, it was like cauliflower. I remember growing up, it was like cauliflower. Nobody want no cauliflower. We don't want no broccoli. We don't want all this stuff. See, then as I got older, I began to learn, too, the benefit of eating this stuff. And so now I enjoy broccoli. I love it. I enjoy certain things, you know. And now even learning, putting, just, listen, you can still have flavor. You can still enjoy the foods and chopping up your, your peppers and your onions and putting certain seasonings and people are, are being a lot healthier and things that are being made that are out there, but we just got to put in the work, do the research and begin to apply it. Make the small changes. Even if it's, if you're used to eating uh, sweets every day, begin to eliminate that and say, okay, maybe once a week, I'm going to enjoy myself. Or now there are different variations of things, things that have no sugar in it. Listen, I remember I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes um, several years ago. Yeah, and my wife began to change certain things about how I ate. She even started changing. And I remember the instant, I'm talking about literally, I think I shared this a long time. I don't know I shared it when it happened. I was at work, and I almost felt, I felt dizzy. And I felt like I was about to, not almost, we well, almost like pass out. And so I called my wife, I was like, something wrong. Something is wrong. Not realizing, and this is what I was doing at that time. I was eating a lot of sweets at work. And just constant because it was just made available. And I'm just snacking and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. And so but went to the hospital and they were talking about admitting me. My levels, I think they were at around 536 or something like that. My blood glucose level. The doctor was like, I should have been in a diabetic coma. If it wasn't, it was the grace of God. And so they immediately applied insulin in my body, got my levels down, released me to go home. And then my wife was like, okay, no, nah, I'm going to start changing some of these things. The instant she started doing it, skin started lightening up, started feeling better. I look back at one of those pictures that I had with my son at a basketball game. I did not even realize just how dark my skin was. And just, and just seeing the adjustments. And so now I'm making it in my mind. This will begin to happen. I began, and I was doing great, but then I began to creep little things back in as I got my levels to a good point. Then I was like, let me enjoy this. And now let me enjoy that. And so I had lost over 30 to maybe 30 to 40 pounds. And then all of a sudden now I started inching a little bit more. Then some of that weight came right back on. And so I made a decision. It was like, no, I got to make sure because I got to live long. I got a grandbaby now. And I, I, I want to be here. I want to be here to play with her and, and, and have fun. And we all go traveling. I got traveling to do. I got preaching to do. It's stuff we got to get done. So my body has to be in order to get this thing accomplished. My wife and I, we got to live long and strong. We have ministry to do. We have people to lead. We have things to accomplish. We got a charge to keep. We got a God to glorify. And so we want to enjoy our lives. And listen, that means from eating right, exercising, to resting, to having recreational time. I'm serious. Enjoying life, having fun, laughing, de-stress yourself. Do some things, recreate, listen, this will help your relationships, recreational companionship. Do something active together, walk together, do sit-ups together. You can turn into something, then it'll turn into something, glory to God. I'm telling you, you can have fun in life with each other. Do things together, push one another, have your brother or your sister in the Lord, or just say, hey, let's go do something, let's exercise, let's get an exercise group together. Let's do this thing together to keep ourselves, to keep one another accountable. Let's do that. That's something I want to do for them. We started with, um, in our ministry, we had a workout group. We're going to get one back again because that's something I personally want to lead in and I want us to start doing. No, we got to transform ourselves. 
transformed by number one, renewing our minds, changing how we think about food, changing how we think about diet and exercise. Listen, you ain't going to be 20 forever. You ain't going to be 25 forever. You ain't going to be 30 and 40 and 50 forever. Listen, everybody ages. The scripture even says, though the outward man perisheth, the inward man is being renewed day by day. And scripture even says, even though um, uh, bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, but it still profits. And so we got to make sure that we have a focus on developing ourselves physically so that we can be healthy in what it is that we've been called to do and called to do. And in order to build and grow, we must be focused. God wants us to be disciplined. This is one of the fruits of the spirit to be temperate, to walk in temperance or self-control. So just like we take authority over a demonic force that's telling us to do something illicit, is the same thing sometimes we have to do when we are just really desiring to eat something and we know we ain't supposed to be eating it at that time. We know the Holy Spirit said, okay, go to sleep. You don't have to eat it right now. Even though your body's trying to tell you you're hungry, you don't need to eat that now. Go to sleep. There are moments where I won that battle and the moments I didn't win it. And knowing that the Holy Spirit told me, go to sleep. And I was like, man, I just want that thing. Man, I'm hungry. Let me go ahead and I get one cookie and then get another cookie. And it's like, wait a minute, why did I even do this? I knew that I wasn't supposed to do this. I wasn't supposed to do this. And so, okay, all right, I lost that battle. So now my job is to let me go back and let me begin to set boundaries around myself so that I can be healthy because I got to be here. I got to live long. I will not die before my time. And so you need to take that ownership of your body. Some of y'all may say, I'm good. But I want you to begin to have an assessment. Listen, meet with your doctors. Go visit. Find out what's going on in your bodies. Get the blood work done. So many, even men, sometimes black men, but men in general, don't like going to doctors because they don't want to know what's happening. No, you better find out what's happening. Well, what if they find something? Well, that means at least you know, so at least you know what you need to focus your faith and your attention on to get out of it. It's better to address it early and find something early so that now a lot of stuff is very preventable. So we got to make that, make that point. Listen, get the colonoscopies, get the things done, check yourselves out, make sure that you are intentional this year about getting healthy, taking more, listen, drinking more water, take some walks, Go out for a brisk walk. Do Buy some little weights that you can take around the house and do some curls, some exercises. Listen, pull up stuff on YouTube, research. We got apps galore. There is no excuse. We're in information overload. You can find little things to do no matter what stage or age that you're in. Do what you can do. Just do what you can do. And sometimes you have to push through pain or push through being tired. That's when that energy will come. You sow energy, you get energy. So I want to encourage you today. Let's make, a, make, let's make a decision to be better physically in our lives so that we can live long and we can live strong. Father, we just thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there may be somebody out there today that you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life but you want to today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to say this, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Therefore, according to your word, I'm now saved. I'm born again. I have eternal life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Now say this. Now say, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come inside me now. To live in me. To dwell in me. To abide in me. I receive you now. I now have the ability, according to the word of God, to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, for those that have have done that prayer, listen, you're born again. Welcome to the family of God.
We want to celebrate with you. We want to help you in your Christian journey and your walk with the Lord. Listen, if that's you and you gave your life to Christ, we want you to contact us. Let us know. You can send a message to the, um, the email on your screen, connect at spiritify.us. You can also um, DM us on one of our social media accounts, whether it's on Instagram, Twitter, or X, uh, Facebook. Let us know, and somebody from our Connect team will reach out to you. Also, if you don't have a church home and you're believing that God is wanting you to connect with this work, we want you to get connected with us. We have in-person services on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. locally in the Richmond, Virginia area. So if you're in the Richmond area or surrounding counties, come on out. A church alive is worth the drive. And so we want to make sure that we want to be there to help you and to be a blessing to you. And so we um, information is on uh, our website um, at the Stonebridge um, Community Center. And so uh, I think it's 230 Carlin Drive. And so in Richmond, Virginia. So you can pull us up and find out where we are. And we want you to come on out and worship with us. OK, we love you. We appreciate you so much. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Um, there's information coming up on your screen. There's a QR code that you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page where you can sow. And as you sow, listen, your gifts of love, listen, your tithes, offerings, and gifts of love go to the work of this ministry to fulfill this vision. God has called us to change a culture, ignite a passion, and live a dream. That as we manifest the love of God through act of goodness and kindness, our goal is to teach people their authority, rights, and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, pursuing their purpose, igniting a passion and fire for the kingdom of God, revealing to the world the true sons and daughters of God and blazing with his glory. And so we just thank God. That's our vision statement here. And so your giving helps us to fulfill the mandate that God has given us. So as you give, we pray that it comes back over on your life again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. We call you out of debt, every need met. That God will cause men to give unto your bosom, that your businesses will flourish and prosper, that you'll get raises on your jobs, that unexpected income from unexpected sources. And I'm telling you that God's favor will be upon your life to help you close the deal, um, to close on the home, to get the job, to get the contract, wherever it is. I don't care where you need favor, that God's favor will manifest for you. So we love you and we appreciate you. And so we declare and we decree it so in Jesus name. Amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. I pray that this ministered to you today. I want us to live long and I want us to live strong. There's so much more that we'll talk about that we're going to have set up classes and things of that nature to help us. I want us to be well-rounded in all that we do. So we want to provide the culture and the atmosphere for us and for all of us to produce that nobody is left behind. Amen. And so we want to make sure that things are set in motion to get those things done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, y'all, um, I declare God's grace and God's peace upon you. Rest well tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.